Morning guys, it's the uh, Saturday of the Bushcraft Show. Just woken up, it's about 9.30 and I'm heading off to meet Liam and JJ uh, for a little bit of podcast recording. We're going to record an episode of The Wodesman. Just going to do some interviews with different people at the show today. So we're going to do that, then we're going to grab some breakfast and uh, yeah, hopefully a coffee because I need one. Look at the bags. I slept so well in my hammock. That uh, set up with the um, carabiners and the tree huggers really made the hammock sit better um, and yeah I slept like an absolute log so really happy with that anyway I'm going to go record this episode and I'll bring you back after the, the podcast has been recorded <laughs> So guys, I've just walked into Stephen from Field and Steel. Yeah. Um, so really yeah. nice to actually finally meet you in person. We chat all the time on Instagram. We do. So actually really nice to, to see you just walking around with your lovely dog. Oh, Hang on. <laughs> Look, you got a lovely little dog. <laughs> Some, some, some of you guys don't know who this is. <laughs> so yeah, uh, control. Do go and follow uh, Field and Steel on Instagram. He makes some of my favourite knives. Um, yeah, awesome stuff. So I've just come back from interviewing uh, Steve Armstrong from Field and Steel and there is Dad whittling and not only whittling but he has bought himself another little fire pit to go on top so that he can cook on it and he has lit the fire without any assistance using birch bark did you use Dad? Birch bark, out of your kit. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, we have literally made a bushcrafter out of this man. And look what he's next to. <laughs> Madman. Nice job on the fire, Dad. Really good. What are you making, Dad? Uh, just a jabati flour. Yeah. A little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and some water to make jabatis. And we're going to make them on our new contraption over there on the fire, which is a built-in saucepan with lids, frying pan with, 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 with legs. So uh, we're going to try it out and see how they go on that, which is what it's for, really. Amazing. Looking forward to tasting those. So that should be good. I'm making it into a sort of a bread mix. Cool. Well, guys, uh, I introduced you to Bill uh, Kincaid earlier in the video. Uh, he said that he wants to learn how to do fire steel and uh, potentially flint steel. So I'm going to pop over there and see if he wants to have a go with those. He's done a fire steel before, but only on uh, cotton wool um, with Vaseline. So I'm going to bring over my little tinder pouch and see if we can get him a few new experiences with some uh, birch bark and some fatwood. So with fatwood, you want to cut a few slithers. All right. So you just cut, cut a few pieces. So this is the resin infused wood from a pine tree. And then you use the spine of the knife to scrape. So you just do the same thing as if you were using fire steel, so scrape down on that on that fat wood. And again, the only thing we're doing there is increasing the surface area. Mm -hmm. And um, we need the, the fuel to be in proportion with the spark. So by making this little dust, it's more likely to catch. So all we do, make a dust and we've got a few bits for it to catch. We get our fire steel, making sure our fingers are out of the way, and 
just drop some sparks okay. in there. Okay. And then we hold our bit over the top to get it to catch. Okay. If you find you get a ridge, just use the blade to just take the ridge off. Yes! Yes, Bill. Yes, Bill. Good. So that's Fatwood. Bye-bye. So when you're confident you're getting sparks, get some char cloth, pop it on top, and do the exact same thing. I always leave a gap of about a millimetre from the edge, ah, because if I was to do that and hit that, it would just rip my char cloth. So I, I just hold it to there with a millimetre to the edge, and then I do my, there we go, first hit. <laughs> so then from, from there, I just put my char cloth, it's now really hot, into my bird's nest, mm. and I just give it some oxygen, and slowly it would just burst into flame. That's really hot. <laughs> there you are. Yes, Love Bill. It. So. <laughs> 75 years of age. Yes, Bill. And you've just smashed flint and steel. Oh, bird. <laughs> well pleased. I love that. Well done, Bill. Bushcraft corner, this is. Well, we are at the bushcraft show. All right, let's go. Right, I'll put a new hole in this. We got Posh right here. 1095 with his 1095 knife. <laughs> And obviously, Josh, the old Evo always Pro. killing it with his Evo Pro. Just got to get that dead flat. Some more, I'm warming it. And I haven't learnt the floaty hands yet, so don't judge me. <laughs> oh, mate, hand it's, floating is like next level advanced stuff. It's like. to do with the angles in which you hold your hands. But I'm, I've really, used a really long spindle because I'm a total noob and I just want to get everything in my favour. But I can get right over it if I'm sitting up at this neutral angle I've found. That was quick, mate. Yeah. We smashed that. Well, you got two. Yeah, we are. That's a big one, actually. As That's well, a good mate. one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's well, see. Let's I've see, got Josh. A bundle here. Yes, mate. You've got a bundle That's, ready. Tell us about smoking. That's a good one. one. You can see when it smokes from the bottom of the yeah. top yeah, yeah, dust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a fucking nut. That's why we worked in tribes. Hey, yeah. It's so true, though. Teamwork, bros. Damn. Oh, fucking size shit. of that. Like look at that fucking. Look at that fucking. <laughs> look at that, that fucking camera. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Check <laughs> that. Check that, that fucking happening. ember. That was happening. Yes, skis. You. you. Yes. Scooping out a bit. Like that. Basically what I want is for the spindle to be able to yeah, ride without it falling out. Yeah. Uh, stance, nice straight line, and you lock your wrist to your shin. Yeah. And the steadier you are, the better. The, the, the pit, lots of people try and push all their power with their arm. It's more about leaning into it and getting your body weight behind the spindle, because then you will be working less hard. Yeah. So I place it in there, get my position nice and comfy, Put the 
top of the spindle in my hole and I start slow, I just get the spindle to move. I use the full length of the bow. That's bitten in now. Yep. Can you see the sounds changed? Definitely. So instead yeah. of polishing, it's burning. Yeah. So basically, you try exactly what I just did. You can see how steady everything is. Um, I'll get you to try that. So David, this is your first time bow drilling, isn't first it? First time. Look at that smoke, guys. Nice long strokes. And then I'm just going to take a little slice off the bottom. That'll just allow a bit more dust to collect and yep. allow a bit of oxygen. Yep. I'm just going to go in slightly further. And we'll be good. I do eat curry. Yeah. I don't use it too good for you, is it? No, it's good. When I looked into it, the only one it said you really shouldn't use is this chestnut. That has pop. Ten. Nine. Give it some gusto at the last bit. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, I think you're in. <laughs> you've got an ember, mate. Yeah, On your own, gonna... first time ever bow drilling, you've just got yourself an ember. I, can't tell. <laughs> I promised I would get you an ember, didn't I? You did. And you've just smashed that, mate. Hard work, isn't it? Worth it, though. It's just sitting there waiting. Well done, mate. Fantastic. Yes, bro. Sick. You're um, grabbing a stick and get a fire going with a flint and steel and that. Do you remember that? Um, Dustin's. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I remember that one. Kept on going at it and eventually you finally got it. Yeah. And maybe like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you're, apart from that, but, and also hold the bow further back as well. It's going to make it easier for it to run parallel to the ground. Definitely. Right. And even if you want, Bring that foot up a little bit further on the board, that's it. Yeah. Really step on it. Right. Okay. With the toe you can lose connection with it. it wobble quite a little bit. Yeah. Right, so start off slow. It just feels a groove of it. Yeah, you, and try, try and use the whole length of the bow as well. Right. right. This is my this is my curry. I've been filling it up with some of that in the squirrel oil. Just go take the squirrel out the tree, give him an old ring and squeeze and we'll have a neck. Squeeze that all the oil, put it on there, nice bit of marinade and the salt. Gives a right nice ding and a pop, that's what that does. Did you say squirrel oil? I say squirrel oil, and that's, that's my yeah, business, man. Right? I'm a squirrel oil farmer. I take all the oil from the squirrels. The thing about squirrel oil, it's a multi-purpose oil. You can put it in your lawnmower, in your chainsaw, you can grease up your hair with it. You can rub it on your feet. A bit of a massage for the ladies. There's all sorts of things y'all can do with that squirrel oil. It's a multi-purpose thing, and it now comes in its own bottle. 
<laughs> only three dollars for me. <laughs> I gone board a jug of this here squirrel oil and I thought I'd give it a try with some good old fashioned moonshine. How that going down let's play it let's on the hat boy. Did you put radioactive material in this cause that's fire? Of course I did. Why don't you, why don't you clear all about a bit of radiation boy? <laughs> 7,000 jars of beer, great ale. Yeah, he's going he's going to the forest in the bush craft and stuff. Put the wheel lights on. Who's that in Liam's truck? There's, there, hey Ma, get the shotgun. There's the Gatoring truck again. We got ourselves a burglar. We got ourselves one of them gator creatures. What you doing about that boy? I got you some goddamn squirrel oil, boy. No way, boy. Hands, so don't open that one first. <laughs> We'll Thanks, bro. That, that was we a do. special one that I got for you. Oh, mate. So, thank you. Yeah, that that looks nice, nice, actually. Oh, I appreciate that, dude. Oh, so Cheers. Up to, and then, uh, yeah, Cheers, lad. Thank you very much. Huh? Huh? Yes, buddy. Oh. Yeah. Passing out the good stuff. Bit of the old squid oil. <laughs> Mr. Bridges, you don't come out now. <laughs> Mr. Bridges, it's an emergency. I said... This station's occupied. We'll be for some time.
Yeah, boy. Perfect, is looking good. It certainly is, mate. We'll get that on another plate underneath to keep warm and I'll pick up the rest there. Good plan. What have we actually got then? We've got just some sausages, white pudding, black pudding. Then we've got a whole stack of Polish bacon. Oh. We've got some of my own bacon, which I dry cured. We've got some eggs that are homegrown from my little chickens at home. And uh, some pancakes as well. So it's Amazing, bro. Piece. And some bread rolls as well from the bakers. Sick! Awesome. <laughs> You've smashed this breakfast. Weird, yeah, it looks amazing. So we got some of Leon's homemade bacon, we got box set, we got black pudding, we've got white pudding. We have sausages and we have eggs from Liam's own chickens. There is Liam's homemade bacon. Look at that, that is a meat feast. No salad on this plate. Well guys, it's officially that time. It's the end of the bushcraft show. It has been a fantastic time. So many friendly people, so much fun, so many laughs, loads of beer, loads of stupidity. Lots of skill sharing and people getting stuck in and learning and, and sharing skills with each other. And obviously, amazing to spend time with Liam, Josh, Ellie, Dell, Drabbers, all of the other amazing people that we met. Um, it's just been fantastic. Uh, I'm going to leave loads of links in the uh, description for people to go and check out that we've met on this video. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Catch me on the next one. Bye.